Okay, I promised you some data. Data on photosynthesis. So, I think the first bit of data that we could potentially look at is uh, the rate of photosynthesis and respiration. So, measuring, so things that we can measure, and usually these graphs are against light intensity, because light intensity is the thing that limits photosynthesis more than anything else. I can't spell int. <coughs> so when you've done your work on limiting factors, you know, that's your primary limiting factor. And if we look at um, say sugar production. We can see that the more, the higher the light intensity, the more sugars you produce. Now that's just to be expected, isn't it? The more light you've got, the more light you can absorb, and the more photosynthesis you can do, there's going to be a limit to how much that can happen. But actually, at very low light intensities, we've got something else going on. So. At the very low light intensities, remember that sugar production is from photosynthesis. And then we've got respiration using sugars at the same time. So, yes, they're in different compartments. You know, one's in a mitochondria and one's in a chloroplast. They don't kind of make sugars export and bring them back in for respiration in the cells. That would be nonsense, wouldn't it? So at some point, the sugars being used up for respiration and the sugars being produced in photosynthesis must meet a, a point where they're equally balanced. And that point is called the compensation point. So what that really means is here, underneath the compensation point, you're using up more sugar in respiration than you're producing in photosynthesis. Up above the compensation point, you're making more sugar than you're using up in respiration. And where they're equal, you've got the compensation point. Now, obviously, sugar production isn't the only thing that you could measure. And uh, certainly in your practical book, you've got one where we look at carbon dioxide levels. So that's the algae balls experiment. You pop your little algae balls that are photosynthesizing. Put your lamp on. This is my lamp. I'm just going to tell you because I'm rubbish at drawing a light bulb. So you've got your lamp there. Set up your little pots different distances away. So our independent variable is the distance centimeters. <coughs> As you get further away, these little algae balls get less and less and less light. Need to put the same number of algae balls, obviously, in each one. Otherwise, it won't be a fair test. Uh, otherwise, you can't compare the results. And what do you put inside the tubes? You put into into your little pots. We put some indicator, some carbon dioxide indicator. And if you remember, 
It starts off red. If it's using up carbon dioxide and taking it out of the solution, the solution goes alkaline, which makes the colour go purple. And you may have done this at school with um, by just putting a bit of pond weed in. If you've got loads of respiration and you've got carbon dioxide given out, it's going to go acid and it's going to go yellow. And then in between you'll have various shades of sort of reddy purple. Some purple streaks in there as well. And we can use that to determine compensation point, which would be the point at which the indicator does not change colour because the carbon dioxide produced and the carbon dioxide used up in photosynthesis completely balance out. So that's the sort of practical in your practical book. Um, I was going to do a video about it, I have to wait till next year now. <coughs> so that's sort of one set of data and then we could look at what's actually going on in that Calvin cycle. So another sort of, you know, famous uh, series of experiments do things like switching the light on and off and looking at the levels of GP and ribulose bisphosphate. So here we've got the light, then we're going to put the, the light off and we're going to make it dark and up here we've got the levels, concentration of various substances. So the two ones that we're interested in from the Calvin cycle, ribulose bisphosphate, so you put the light on, Photosynthesis starts, make ribulose bisphosphate, it will level off and then in the dark that level is going to fall. So that's your RUBP level. <coughs> your level of phosphoglyceraldehyde, PGAL, PGA, glycerate phosphate, GP will do the same. So it'll increase, but in the dark this will accumulate until it levels off. So thinking about Kelvin cycle, why on earth should that be? So this is my little Kelvin cycle, I'm going to just write it over here. CO2, RUBP, GP, TP, back to RUBP. So in the light everything's fine, isn't it? We can fix our carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide fixation. And the cycle carries around, so we're making GP and the level goes up. And the GP's resynthesized into RUBP, so that level goes up, super duper. And they level out in the middle because you're making the GP at the same rate as you're resynthesizing your RUBP, so you can do it again. But what happens in the dark? So when we switch out the light, we're still going to be able to take up carbon dioxide, but remember our light independent, our light dependent products going in there. So we're not going to be able to do that bit of the cycle. So the GP we're still going to be able to make from whatever RUP BP is left and that's going to carry on going up it's going to level out because your RBP RUBP ribulose bisphosphate is going to be used up fixed to carbon dioxide to make the GP but as it's used up it's not being resynthesized because that bit of the cycle is not working and as, when it disappears obviously we can't make any more GP and we could do the same with carbon dioxide. So we've got the same graph, levels of substance. 
we've got carbon dioxide present, no CO2. So let's think what's going to happen. If we've got carbon dioxide present, we are going to be able to fix GP and remake RRUBP. So we're pretty much, we're going to have, if it's been doing it for a while, what colour pens I'm using now, Ooh. we're going to have equal levels of those substances. So we're looking at relative amounts here. We don't like the word amounts, relative levels. Let's call it levels of the stuff. So here we're making GP and resynthesizing of RUBP, and they're pretty much that's going to, you know, whatever's being used is being used to resynthesize. When we switch the light out then, so switch the carbon dioxide off, what's going to happen? Well, we're going to run out, so if we stop that bit, then the RUBP has nothing to accept, and so our levels of GP should go down because we can't make any GP. And the GP that we've got, providing we've got, you know, this is in the light, remember, so we've got the light on here. We're still getting our light dependent products, so our GP, whatever's left, will be converted into TP and resynthesize our RUBP and those levels will go up. So again, you know, if you get one of these graphs, sketch a little Calvin cycle, okay, and then work out what's going on. Um, we could do the same for, say, NADPH, uh, with the light on, with the light off, so you could do this for the you could do that kind of graph as well for the light reactions. Okay, I think that's your lot on data.